गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू लेक्चर नंबर थर्टी एंड थर्टी वन ऑफ मॉड्यूल फोर दैट इज एक्सचेंज एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एक्सचेंज एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द प्रोड्यूस्ड फिजिकल फैसिलिटीज सो लेट सी सो बिफोर मूविंग towards the lecture let's have a brief review of dimensions for human order so if you remember we studied dimension of education in during this lecture number 18 to 21 where we talked about the goal of education process of education policies related to education all this we covered in this dimension of education that is lecture 18 to 21 after that we studied dimension of health lecture 22 to 24 where we talked about the health for existence of self and body feeling of self regulations program for ensuring health policies related to health then we talked about the dimension of justice from lecture 25 to 26 where we talked about justice the importance of this dimension for harmonious society where we talked about relationship established values expressed values all this we talked during this lecture 25 to 26 <clears throat> then we talked about dimension of production <clears throat> in lecture 27 to 29 where we talked about the production types of production need of production evaluation of production then we did critical analysis of the present production system and we studied about the policies about the production system and in this lecture number 30 and 21 we are going to talk about exchange and storage so whatever is produced now we are going to study how this exchange and storage is related to this physical facilities what is importance of this exchange and storage in human order this we are going to study in this lecture so first if we see the exchange and distribution then we can easily observe that the basic difference between exchange and observation exchange and distribution is while we distribute the thing there is no need to return the physical facility so return is not expected in this distribution but when we exchange physical facility the return is expected so i am exchanging physical facilities suppose i have wheat now i want rice from you so return in both side are required but when we are talking about distribution so there is no need to return anything we are distributing it for social welfare for running the system smoothly etc so what is the goal of exchange what is the goal of distribution let's study it so goal of education goal of exchange is to ensure the availability of necessary physical facilities and required services as per the need of everyone in different regions and times so basically exchange is required to fulfill the required physical facilities in the society so there are many kind of needs and every need we cannot produce 
आर सेल्फ सो देर इज ए नीड ऑफ एक्सचेंज सो दैट एवरी वन नीड कैन बी फुलफिल्ड सो दैट द रिक्वायर्ड फिजिकल फैसिलिटी कैन बी अवेलेबल to everyone in the society similarly if we see the goal of distribution so fulfilling the needs of everyone in the society because we are talking about family to world family order and in fact if we are talking about humane society it means we are talking about this family to world family order and ensuring harmony from family to world family order it will includes many things for example there are many people in the society in the family who are unable to produce like old people child deprived people in the society they are not able to produce anything that's why distribution is required so that who those who are not able to produce due to mental illness or physical illness the physical facilities should be accessed by them and this can be done with the distribution similarly those who have been through some accident or natural calamities so due to natural calamities if few people in the society are not able to produce then this distribution help to ensure their needs similarly those who have devoted themselves for societal work so once people devoted themselves for societal work so definitely they don't have time to produce because they move from one place to another place from this societal work so distribution is required to fulfill needs of those people so if you see the goal of distribution these are the goal of distribution number 1 to give needs to those people who are unable to produce to those who have been through some accident or natural calamities to those who are working full time for service causes in the society so if there is a proper distribution of physical facility then all these kind of people may feel secure so all these kind of people may feel secure may feel prosperous that they would have physical facility which are required for nurturing protection and right utilization of their body so these are the goals of exchange and distribution so if we see exchange so in exchange no production happens during this process it is for mutual fulfillment not for exploitation so it is important point to be noted that the exchange should happen with mutual fulfillment its purpose is to ensure mutual fulfillment in people not for exploitation so if we ensure this mutual fulfillment then exchange becomes easy mutually fulfilling if we see the type of exchange there are two types of exchange direct exchange indirect exchange so if you see direct exchange for example exchange is happening with physical facilities for example rice in exchange with white uh, wheat in this manner exchange can happen suppose i have some physical facility you have another physical facility i cannot produce physical facility that you have you cannot produce physical facility that i have so both of us can exchange our physical facilities so this is a direct exchange 
indirect exchange in indirect exchange we are using some medium some currency so in today's scenario we are using money rupees as a currency so you have physical facility i have currency so i can give you appropriate price of that physical facility and in exchange i will take that physical facility from you so in this manner indirect exchange happens so there are two types of exchange direct and indirect then why exchange because it is practically impossible to produce everything so it is not possible for one person to produce every needs that is required in our family or that is required by an individual that's why exchange process becomes very important so fulfill all the needs required many professions required many work which is actually a combined effort by the group of families suppose there are 10 to 15 families in a group they work separately for example someone is producing rice someone is producing wheat someone is making clothes in this manner we can exchange to fulfill all our all our needs so if exchange happens with the feeling of mutual fulfillment then needs of everyone can be fulfilled then we can talk about valuation and exchange so to carry out the exchange with the feeling of mutual fulfillment is a fundamental requirement so again as we are talking through this course from hv1 hv2 hv3 and in this hv4 that without the feeling of relationship without the feeling of mutual fulfillment the society cannot be harmonious so to ensure harmonious society this feeling of mutual fulfillment feeling of relationship is a basic requirement fundamental requirement if it is missing from the people in any society then during this exchange and distribution there would be corruption there would be exploitation there would be madness of profit that will ultimately exploit human being and rest of the nature so when we are talking about society it means we assume that we have this fundamental requirement in our mind so whenever we are talking about this exchange distribution education health in all these this feeling of mutual fulfillment is in the base so when we want to carry out the exchange with the feeling of mutual fulfillment so next very natural question is what should be the basis of this exchange or what basis on what basis price of a commodity should be fixed so this is a very natural question that arises in our mind so once we have this feeling of relationship in the society then how can we evaluate cost of a product so fundamental input for production is the time and labor because if you see this nature in nature things are happening with definite physical laws with definite natural laws so things are happening like trees are growing weathers are changing itself with the natural laws so what we are doing is we are making some effort we are devoting some time and labor rest thing is happening in the nature 
by the virtue of natural laws by the virtue of physical laws so natural resources are naturally available on this earth so we are not creating natural resources actually natural resources are evolving in this nature with the natural process so therefore the society property of human being all this should recognize this so human being society should recognize this that we are not going to create we are not going going to make any natural resources resources are being prepared resources are happening by virtue of this nature what we are going we are going to devote some time and labor with natural resources so this time and labor is a fundamental input when we are talking about production processes so we produce or manufacture necessary things when we put our time and labor on the natural resources <clears throat> so how much time and labor has been invested is our fundamental input because the rest rest thing is happening in the nature so fundamental input is how much time and labor we are investing with natural resources so we can say this time and labor can be the basis to decide the value and rate of exchange of products so keeping this time and labor we can evaluate the cost of a product so basis of exchange evaluation on the basis of labor time invested so major part of the production happens naturally in this nature so as i have discussed now that due to virtue of physical laws nature laws there is a production in nature nature which is happening naturally now a human have has to invest labor and time in this process so this can be seen easily in agriculture production so once a farmer invests his time labor in the field rest thing happens in the natural naturally in the nature naturally so a farmer devote his time a farmer puts his effort in sowing the seeds in uh, giving water rest thing happens naturally so labor is a fundamental unit fundamental input rest all it supporting tools supporting means so whatever instruments are required whatever technology is required all these are supports that help in labor but labor is a fundamental input so when we are going to exchange what would be the fundamental input to evaluate the cost of a commodity the fundamental issue is labor and time how much time and labor we are going to invest in this production process so how to fix this price based on evaluation of labor invested so very simple proposal is given here you have to evaluate you have to verify it so labor value of an object is time taken to produce it multiplied by weightage factor so how much time is being invested in the production process number 1 and weightage factor means other things which are required during this labor or in the preparation of labor so for example labor value in manufacturing of raw material used in production so whatever labor is required in manufacturing of that raw material will be one of the weightage factors then labor value in manufacturing equipment used in production 
so there are some equipments which are used by farmer in agriculture so we have to calculate the labor value in manufacturing those equipment then type of labor it is heavy or light etc then time spent learning essential skills so whatever skills are required to work with nature there is certain skills which is to be learned before jumping into this production process so the time spent during this learning of essential skills will also be counted as a weightage factor then quality of good produced goods produced through this production process so all these are weightage factors so we will calculate the time and labor invested in this weightage factor and then we can multiply by this time taken to produce it so in this manner we can calculate labor value of an object so you can do exercise you can take any commodity like wheat anything like ice cream and you put this formula you try to find out how much labor is required how much time is invested to make this wheat what kind of skills required how much time a person has devoted to learn those skills skills then what kind of instruments are required for that production process all this homework you can do and you can calculate the cost of the pro- cost of the product so you can do this as exercise this is a homework for you you do this by yourself and see what cost comes through this proposal another thing when you will start calculating in this manner you will pay attention on the labor done by various people during this whole process otherwise if you see this contemporary system you are not aware about this labor and time invested by many people during this whole production process simply you give money and you take an object and you are even not aware how much effort in terms of labor and time is being spent by many people involved in the production process so once you do this exercise once you start calculating this labor value then you will pay attention to this labor and time invested by people this during this production process so contemporary method mostly are based on demand and supply so in reality it is controlled by dominant groups in the society so few groups decide they make demand they supply they exploit the people keeping their salary very low and to give you product at the low cost all these things are happening in the market and we are not even aware of this because we are not take, paying attention toward this labor and time invested in this whole production process that's why many times in today's scenario this exchange and distribution becomes exploitative it becomes exploitative because it is not being happened with the feeling of mutual fulfillment and another point is the labor cost the time is under evaluated in this present market system so valuation based on labor hours free from profit loss so when we evaluate this cost of any product on the basis of labor hours so it becomes free from profit loss 
so system of exchange so prerequisite requisite of such kind of system such kind of evaluation is acceptance of relationship so that time is spent the labor is spent can be honestly calculated with the feeling of this relationship with the feeling of trust with the feeling of affection with the feeling of love with the feeling of gratitude so if these feelings are in the base then we can evaluate we can appreciate the effort made by people another point another prerequisite is understanding and working for prosperity through our own labor using cyclic mutually enriching process so if we have not prospered we don't have feeling of this prosperity then we feel deprived and start exploiting the human being involved in the production process and rest of the nature so another prerequisite is we should work with the feeling of prosperity and we should prepare with the mentality to do labor using cyclic mutually enriching process then understanding of this mutual fulfillment in relationship so these are prerequisites for such kind of exchange and evaluation so if you want to have this kind of exchange where the effort the time the labor is appreciated then we should equip with these three prerequisites if we see the current system largely using currency so terms of exchange decided through prevailing economics market so many times price is decided through the present prevailing economic system valuation is done in terms of currency on the basis of demand supply not on the basis of labor invested time invested in this and in this demand supply system many times we exploit human being we exploit rest of nature so many times this demand is created artificially and product is sell product is sold then so basic motivation is profit maximization in the current system the basic motivation for the exchange is profit maximization so with profit maximization many things are manipulated many people are exploited during this whole process so what is the way out so way is to have a feeling of relationship to understand relationship with others human being then having feeling of prosperity understanding of mutual fulfillment fulfillment all these are required to be free from all these kind of unethical practices so what needs to be done to ensure proper exchange so to ensure proper exchange we need to work at all these three levels number 1 at mental level so we should have the mentality to take the thing of the same labor value in exchange of the another thing so this mentality this preparation of mentality is required to have a ethical exchange and distribution so this is honestly regarding exchange if we have the mentality of profit exploitation and accumulation then there would be lack of honesty and it will cause many problems in the society and at the level of nature so to ensure proper exchange this preparation of mentality in each and every one through human education sanskar is required second important point is for proper exchange is the need to have a feeling of relationship with the person with whom we are doing the exchange so feeling of relationship 
in exchange is also required. So with the feeling of relationship, we cannot think of exploiting the other people. We can think of exploiting the other people only when we do not feel related to that person. And third important requirement is a proper system and proper policy. So every person should get the return in the issue of his labor. It is the responsibility of the human order to ensure this and design in such kind of exchange system on the basis of religion, relation. For that, we have to work on this mentality through education and sanskar. That's why we studied this education and sanskar first. So if we ensure such kind of education and sanskar, so one can be prepared with this mentality, with the feeling of prosperity, with the mentality of doing work with own labor, and one can design such kind of system free from exploitation, humiliation, humiliation, etc. Similarly, if we see distribution, distribution is even more important than exchange because distribution means to fulfill the requirements of every person in the family, whether he is directly contributing in production or not. So exchange happens with those people who produce, but when we are talking about distribution, distribution happens with those people, maybe with those people who are not producing anything. So we carry out exchange in the society or in the market and distribution in the family. So as I talked initially that there are many people in the society who are not physically good who are not in the position to produce anything, then this dimension of distribution may ensure need of such kind of people. So when we expand this distribution in the society, there are activities like charity and other philanthropic work is required. So all these have importance. So with time, one can see unequal distribution of physical facility due to differences of productivity of land, labor invested, etc. So we are ignoring, ignoring such kind of valuation and it is creating problems like unequal distribution, gap between the producer and consumer, etc. Many ethical practice, practices. It is because of ignoring this feeling of relationship, because of ignoring this feeling of prosperity, ignoring the importance of labor and time invested, etc. So everyone should have the opportunity to produce and they should produce. So one side we should prepare mentality to do labor through education sanskar. Another side is there should be an opportunity so that those who are ready to produce may get this opportunity for the production process, production. But it may be possible that for some genuine reason, a person cannot involve in the production process, then there is a need of such distribution for those people. For example, if a house in the village catches fire or someone undergoes some accident, this type of distribution will be helpful in such situation. So this, such distribution is important whenever there is a genuine region. So if we ensure such kind of exchange and distribution, everyone in the society feels secure in terms of physical facility. Then we can talk about what to do at the level of family, society and system to ensure such kind of exchange and distribution. So what we can do, number one, inculcate the mentality of relationship at the level of society so that a person can develop a feeling of relationship. This can be done at the level of society with combined effort, with human education and scar. This feeling of relationship can be developed in everyone. 
then at the level of system design and develop proper mechanism of price fixation is required so at the level of system policies can be made to ensure such kind of exchange and distribution then there is a need to develop a proper currency exchange system which can happen at the level of policy at the level of society so there is a need to design exchange system such that exchange become smooth for example there should be exchange center in the village where all the local exchanges will be carried out so there is need to create exchange system in at the level of village clusters at the level of villages so that whatever is being produced locally can be exchanged with another group so we can facilitate this exchange through ensuring such kind of exchanging center then exchange center of the village should exchange with the exchange center of the other village rather than individual exchanging so as i talked initially that this kind of policy this kind of system would facilitate ensuring a right exchange and distribution then level of exchange so exchange can also be seen in terms of these three levels with the equal level with the larger level with the smaller level so for example at the level of district the exchange center at the level of district should exchange with the exchange center of another district so some exchange center can be made at district level similarly can some exchange center can be made at village level according to the produced things so materials which are not available at these centers should be exchanged with the exchange center of higher level say commissionery so third type of exchange needs to be done with center inside the district at the level of smaller than district like this we can divide it into a level so that the exchange can be smooth at every level so these three levels we have discussed that can ensure a humane exchange and distribution system so let's sum up the whole lecture so we studied that one of the important goal of distribution is to ensure the availability of necessary physical facility and required services as per the need of everyone so with the process of this distribution availability of physical facility to needy people becomes possible according to their region and time because we cannot produce everything that's why there is need for some processes of exchange so that we can get good services required for nurturing protection right utilization of the body for smooth running of the society so we talked about two type of exchange direct and indirect indirect is in indirect exchange we use some medium like currency then we talked about evaluation of the exchange with weightage factors then we talked about distribution which can be done with the help of mutually fulfilling feeling so that's all from my side for this lecture we will meet in the next lecture have a good day thank you very much